Hi, I'm your host, Katie Hacker. Wire wrapping is one of our all-time favorite techniques, so keep it fresh with these updates on tried and true techniques. Take a look at this necklace. I love the way that these pieces are layered together. And this, these are created from a pre-made chain. So you can use this type of chain to create any type of jewelry. And what's great is it's already linked together for you. Here's how it looks when it's all linked. Okay, and the reason this one is so neat is that it has the two sizes of leaves linked together. And you can take them apart and create the foundation of the necklace. So what we'll do to take them apart is use your chain nose pliers to open the jump rings that are linking these pieces together. Now, of course, you could look for other types of chain that are also composed of interesting elements that would make great pendants. So you're going to just detach all of these little guys and set those aside. And then the first thing you want to do is connect all of the big leaves together. So you can see they have holes at the end of each leaf. And they also have this open work pattern, which creates this really lovely lacy design. Um, and you can see through it, which is kind of fun. So you'll link them together in this type of pattern, just a pleasing arrangement, basically, to create a base. OK, and then what you'll do is take your small leaves and link them in a circle. And these are already starting to look like a flower. Now, here's a new kind of wire wrapped flower. What you do is string a few rondelles. There are nine here, but you would adjust them depending on how large you want the center of your flower to be. String them onto a piece of 24 gauge wire. And I always cut the wire a little bit longer than I really need, um, just in case. So twist these together at the base to make a circle. Okay, now how you make the center of the circle for this type of flower is you string a large rondelle and a bead cap onto an eye pin. So take your chain nose pliers and bend the eye pin at an angle so it sits against the front of the bead cap. Then you're going to place it through the middle of that beaded circle. And you'll want to be sure that you choose a rondelle that's large enough to kind of settle on the front of the circle. Okay, then at the back, you're just going to turn it over, bend your eye pin a little bit, and then wrap this coiled wire around the eye pin, like that. And then you can fold this back into place across the back of the flower. All right, so now you have two ends that you're going to use to stitch this onto the front of the necklace. This beaded circle, or sorry, this leaf circle here is going to get the beaded circle right in the center. So you'll place this through, and you have to kind of adjust this as you go along. Now you'll want to put your wire ends also through the leaves. So you can stitch these down. Just choose a spot. That's where that open work filigree type of pattern is really handy because you can stitch right through it at any place in the design and just kind of arrange your flower so that it doesn't show when you're finished. Okay, so now you're gonna layer these onto the front of the large leaves once you have your ends pulled to the back. And you just wanna pull, when you're doing wire work, the main thing is to you know, make sure that everything is nice and secure. So as you're working along. Now you can place this part onto, see where there's this open space in the pattern? You're just going to place this over the front. And this is where, again, you're going to need to make some adjustments as you're working on it. But you basically just wanna make sure that it's secure. So you'll layer it onto the front and stitch your wires through to the back. So make sure you use your chain nose pliers here to pull through. Okay, so now what you'll do is, see how my leaves have gone all kind of crooked here? What you'll need to do is go around with your wire and stitch these back into place. Now be sure that when you're working with wire, you always tuck all of the ends into your work so that you don't have any pieces that would snag on your clothing or skin, just make sure that you um, secure those ends really well. So to get them secure, what you can do is turn your piece so that you can pull the ends all the way through. Okay, so if I already have all of this piece stitched down here, then I would just take this end and tuck it back in. I would trim it really pretty small like this and then tuck this right into the work. 
and make sure that that's nice and flat against the back of the pattern. So once this is all attached, then what you'll do is open your jump rings here on the end and attach some really beautiful chain. And you can of course attach a clasp to the, each side of the necklace um, with the jump ring as well. So this gives you a really beautiful finishing touch for your necklace. And if you take a look to at this bracelet, this is another idea of using this type of pre-linked components. You can use them to dangle as charms um, rather than linking them end to end the way that you can see how they come like this with the beaded links in between. And of course these earrings with the gold leaves are really beautiful. Over here on the silver necklace, this is another example of layered pendants. If you take a look at the middle components here in the center, you can see that those are layered using some wire wrapping techniques, just like the basic stitching that I just showed you. And on the silver earrings that are closest to the necklace, you can see that those um, dangles are really flowing down. That's also just with jump ring techniques.